Hi guys and welcome to another episode of the Work Knits podcast. My name's Lauren and I'm joining you from England in the United Kingdom on a Sunday and this is a kind of slightly delayed episode I guess. We'll probably be back on schedule after today um, but I did take a week off podcasting. When I first set up this podcast back in February the idea was to do it every two weeks and then over probably the last month or so um, life's just been moving quite quickly and there were points where I was doing so much knitting that to talk to you about all of it once a fortnight meant that the episodes were getting really really long so we started doing a kind of shorter 20 to 30 minute episode every week um but yes apologies that last week's one um didn't happen and that was quite late notice um I know I for one have a bit of a routine around watching certain knitting podcasts and they kind of form part of my relaxation routine at the weekend so apologies if I disrupted people's routines at all but we're back this week and I'm hoping to get back to the weekly 20 minute um, podcast episodes for the foreseeable future um I think it, let me know in the comments what you think but I think they're working quite well um and they're a bit more easy to digest than the kind of 45 minutes to an hour long um podcast episodes so yeah, that's where we're up to. Um, I hope you have all been well and have been having a good couple of weeks. Uh, here in the UK, it's continued to be really, really muggy and close. So this is the first time I've actually worn any knitwear in two weeks and I'm already feeling a little bit warm. <laughs> we're gonna have a glow on today. Um, thank you so much for all of you who let me know what the weather's like with you, where you are, what you're knitting, what you're loving. Um, that was so lovely off the last episode. It brought me so much joy reading all those comments and coming back to you. Sorry that I have not been quite as quick as I usually am. I normally respond within the day uh, or within 24 hours. And it's been more like 48 hours to 72 hours at the moment. But yeah, uh, I'll come at the end of the episode to, to kind of um, a quick very quick life update um, for those of you that are interested. In terms of the rest of the format of the podcast, I have a half finished object to show you. I have some exciting works in progress. I have a very, very small section of yarn acquisitions, which were actually a kind of belated birthday present. So you can skip over that bit if, if that's not your jam. And then I've also got some future knitting plans that I was gonna share with you. But highlight would, or kind of high level summary would be, I've not done as much knitting as I would have wanted to in a two week span. But hey, that's just how it goes sometimes. So I hope you've all got something nice to drink, maybe a snack and that you're sitting comfortably or kind of listening to this as you're, you're up to something else. Um, I haven't got a drink with me today. It's just too warm. and I've already had my rotor of coffee for, for today. Um, but yeah, let's dive straight in. So a uh, half finished object, which is one that many of you will be incredibly familiar with because I've been working on this for a long time and then it's stagnated a bit. This is a kind of self-drafted, quite basic colourwork sock. This is knit up in John Arburn Textiles Exmoor sock. Now I'm looking to my right because I think somewhere she's reaching and she's got it. Somewhere I've got <laughs> The other half the cake. So I bought two 50 gram skeins of the Exmoor sock from John Arburn. I bought the darker blue colour, which I believe is called Wartleberry. The um, ball band for that one is a little bit faded, so it's quite hard to read, but I think it's called Wartleberry. And then this one, this lighter blue colour, is called, and this is even more favourite, uh, more, even more like faded. This looks like Mackerel Sky. Um, so the Exmoor sock from John Arban is a four ply, you get 200 metres and 50 grams and I'll read you the little bit on the tag just so that you know, you've got the background, it says embracing the characteristics of our local Exmoor sheep as a durable machine washable yarn in an array of North Devon inspired shades. So it is 60% Exmoor Blueface, 20% Corydale, 10% Swartz Balls, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and 10% Nylon. Um, so yeah. That's, that's the uh, fibre content for this. They recommend 2.5 millimetre needles and that is indeed what I have knitted this on. I knit this on my tiny little nine inch circulars um, and then used Magic Loop just for the very, very end of the toe. Um, this is just like a flea stitch design. 
uh, that I've used on, a, on a, one of my sock patterns, my Time to Decompress socks, I'll link them down below. Um, and I just wanted to do it again for a kind of more like all over flea stitch sock. I did a slightly funky heel flap and gusset construction in the sense that on the turn, it's purely by accident, I just misremembered how you do the turn. And instead of knitting two together as you turn each time, I just literally turned. Uh, and so it meant I wasn't really decreasing the stitch count. Now, I've been a bit worried about how that's going to fit. It makes a very strangely shaped sock um, heel, but actually it fits beautifully. And I think I will continue to do this more. It puts a lot less tension on those stitches that are going around the curve of the way your kind of heel meets the bottom of your foot. Overall, pretty happy with the sock. The flea stitch turns into like diagonal stripes on the gusset section because of the decreases. The one thing I wish I hadn't done, but I wanted to create like a clear divide between those diagonal stitches and going back into the flea stitch. And in doing so, I just don't think it's worked very well. But to be honest, you're not really able to see that. It's going to be on the bottom of my foot. Everything else is pretty perfect. I have woven in the ends and I just need to block. Um, but very excited to cast on a sister to this sock. I've got the other 50% um, of the yarn in two cakes to be working with. So I think I will have one pair of kind of shorty but colour work socks out of 100 grams of yarn. So that's ideal. So that is my first, well, my one and only semi-finished object, half-finished object there for you. Put the yarn, etc. over here. I realised I've forgotten to say what I'm wearing and you won't be able to see all of it because it is not quite in short, but I am wearing my monoculus sweater or top as it is um, that I ended up in the last couple of months. This is a pattern you probably all know by Midori Hiroshi. I edited it ever so slightly in that I didn't do ribbing around the neckline. I cast on below the ribbing uh, with the intention to go back in and knit ribbing that I decided I didn't want to. I thought I was going to put an eye cord on. Actually, I just love it the way it is. I messed up the first set of texture, got it right the set for the second repeat. Then I did the diamond um, lace stitch and then I just knit the rest of the yoke in stockinette and that was perfect for me. I then did a bit of knitting so that the yoke is already a compound construction, both uh, knitting like round yoke and raglan. But I then also knit straight for a little bit to make sure the depth of the sleeves is correct. I My row gauge tends to be quite off. It tends to be, I tend to get, I don't know the right way around. My rows take up less space than designers ones do. So on yokes, they don't tend to reach the right depth. I've got, I have knit quite tightly. Um, what else to talk about on this? The yarn is Malabrigo Sock in the colourway 851 Turner. And I use less than a skein and I did the short sleeve version. And that is kind of all I can really say about this. Um, apart from, yeah, it's the first time I've really worn it. No, it's a lie. I wore it once, once or twice when I first made it a couple of months ago. And it's been the first time I've worn it again since because it's just been so humid. So there we go. That's what I'm wearing. Um, let's dive in to some works in progress. Um, in full transparency, I'm going to keep the pace of this episode quite high, not only because I think that's probably more enjoyable to watch, but also I did already record this episode <laughs> this morning and it was a longer episode and the lighting was just horrendous. So I'd found this spot on kind of like a landing in the house that worked quite well, I thought. But actually you could hear the noise of the trains and neighbours and stuff and then you could also just the lighting was really bad so the one disadvantage is i'm not sure this is the nicest and most aesthetic background but at least the lighting's okay and you can actually see what i'm talking to you about so bear with i've got some exciting news on where we may be over future episodes but i'll come to that at the end so i'm going to duck down and get my first work in progress so this is an exciting one for me because it's actually a very, very, very long term whip. This is a cardigan that I cast on in 2020 in the middle of the pandemic. It was my first time sticking a colour work sweater. I used the Strange Brew sweater recipe from Tin Can Knits. I've got the book, a uh, physical copy of the book um, that I was given as a birthday present the year before. And yeah, I wanted to try sticking. So I used the sweater recipe um and i then made up my own color work motif which basically just makes 
blocks out of two rows repeated the same and then you switch so the block moves in between the previous two blocks i hope that kind of makes sense uh, this is knit up in holstarn the main color the blue is mariner and then the lighter goldy color is gold crest and then this orange is called ember i knit this i think on 3.5 millimeter needles that's what i've been using to then continue with the project and it doesn't look like there's too much of a difference in gauge but let's just see i have a feeling i knit the rib on three millimeter needles and then i haven't done that on the bit that i've just worked on and it's quite obvious so let's see if i go back in and rework that but let's explain where i got to so at this point in the pandemic uh, and around this time the knitting community was really big on sleeves that don't have any shaping like straight sleeves that went then went into kind of a bell sleeve end where you decrease before the ribbing so i had knit I'd, I'd steeped the sweater, the sweater into a cardigan. I'd then done the neckline, the button bands, um, and then I'd knit one sleeve. Now this sleeve is quite cropped and it is lit completely straight. Uh, it's got no decreases. And that just isn't a look I want to go for anymore. I've got quite a few sweaters that do that, the ones that do. Fine, I wear them, I enjoy them, but I don't need any more. And this cardigan is gonna be quite cropped. It's gonna sit quite open um, I've not done buttonholes it's just going to be a layering piece between t-shirts and jackets when I'm heading outside something I can throw on and off in the office that kind of thing so it was left with just one sleeve done and one sleeve not done because I just lost mojo with it and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it so what three years later <laughs> I've picked it back up I have now knit the other sleeve I've knit it longer I've knit it with a taper I'm decreasing every 10 rows and then I've done quite a nice long cuff as I say this cuff is looking like a different gauge to the other bits of ribbing I've done so I may rip back and just redo just the cuff um, so that it matches the other bits of ribbing let's see um, and then I think I may have done those on a three millimeter yeah so I'd hoped that by this episode I would have also frogged the other sleeve and then re-knit that I haven't managed to, but that will be a project for the next couple of weeks. And I'd love to have this ready for September to start wearing to work. Um, it hasn't been blocked, but most of the ends have been woven in apart from the new sleeve ends. Um, and you can hear the jangle because there's loads of stitch markers in there marking all my decreases. So yeah, that is some big progress. It just feels really good to get a long term whip back on the needles, back to, you know, being progressed towards um, being able to wear it and enjoy it. Um, I've got from the move house move I've got lots of whips that are just in boxes and it's really sad and also they're taking up a lot of room and I realized they were they were kind of cluttering the, the space I was using for my knitting before so I think this is going to be a really good time to kind of sort through them and go okay I'm going to finish that and give it to charity I'm going to finish this and wear it or I'm actually not going to finish it and I need to just decide to frog it um, I've got actually I'm just looking at but it's just outside of um short hour course in my eye um, there's a really lovely jumper that I made based on the classic raglan from Espastrico. I'd knit that up in the Rerum Natura. What's their DK base? I can't remember what their DK base is called, but the Rerum Natura DK base and in this beautiful sagey bluey green colour. And I added little cables under the arms, but it's just so cropped and so not wearable. Um, it's not just because it's too short, it's just it's really boxy, but it means you can't wear it underneath things, but because it's quite a thick rustic yarn, it's not really a summer top, but it just doesn't really fit into many categories. So that's going to be one that I'm going to frog. This is going to be one that I'm going to finish. So excited to do that second sleeve and to sort out the ribbing on the one that I have just knit um, so that it matches the rest of the ribbing. So that's been project number one in the last two weeks. Going to duck down for the next project. Sorry. So the next project is one that I think you, some of you were very excited for me to get started on. And that is um, a kind of second version of the cabled collar that I knit earlier this year. The original was a kind of self-drafted doodle. I basically just like got a load of cabled charts that I liked and then was working it out as I went along how I was going to incorporate all those into a collar that would have a split front and back um, longer front, shorter back, and a big, nice ribbed um, collar. I mean, that's not too use the word collar, but you know what I mean. Um, 
so I'd knit that one. That one was knit up in Kate Davies' Aired Tear in the colourway Glamorgan. I loved it. I It just took me so... The actual knitting was so quick. It was the figuring out how to introduce the cables as I was doing the shaping for the shoulders, how to then get all the cables being worked, all the kind of complicated bits being worked on the same row because all the different cable charts are different lengths. I'd gone from working flat to in the round. So it was just... It was the it was the mental energy to figure all that stuff out that took the time. The actual collar, I could have knit that in a week. And that's proving true with my second version, where I'm editing the way that you do the shaping for the shoulders and um, also simultaneously making the working of the cables simpler. So this is where we've got to on my second version. This will all get blocked out so it's nice and uh, less, I don't know what the word is, less scooping in. Um, but yes, this is where I've got to. So brand new net construction. I have knit the front panel. I just now need to pick up my stitches of my waist yarn, do the back panel and then do the ribbed collar. I am knitting this up in Dorero Natura, funny enough, their Gilead yarn in the colour Caramel. This is a worsted weight yarn. I'm knitting this on four millimetre needles and there's 250 metres per 100 grams. Now the previous version I made was, um, as I say, in the Kate Davies Ard tier, which is 65 metres per 50. Um, so that yarn was a lot denser and heavier. Whilst I get more yardage per 100 grams for this, it does mean that my total meterage for the second version, I've got less yarn to play with. So yeah, just want to make sure I get all of all of it done out of the one ball because I think that'd be a really nice project to be able to say you just need one ball of um, Gilead and you would get a whole project out of it. Um, so yeah, quite a lot of progress, but I had kind of wanted this done for this episode. Um, from a knitting perspective, it's actually relatively portable um, once you've worked out the best way for you to organise reading off the multiple charts. But um, just for me, because I'm trying to design it, I'm having to write lots of notes and when I'm commuting on the train I don't have massive space to have the charts out, my notebook out, the knitting out, etc. So we'll get there hopefully by next week. I then want to launch this as a test knit so that I can then release the pattern in end of September, October time. I know lots of you were very keen when I said I'd make this into a pattern so do let me know if you'd be interested in the test knit and I will add you to the list and obviously send you the details as and when I have got this sample done but if you are interested in test knitting you you can at least know you'll need four millimeter needles and um a, a ball of gilead uh, by Dererum natura so that's been my second whip and then my third whip if i can duck down again my third whip is maybe a bit of an unexpected one but i have been chatting about it I'd love all your thoughts on where I go with this one. Um, so let me get some bits and pieces out and then I can show you. So I went to the John Arbon mill um, about a month ago, I'm thinking. That was my, that was my trying to remember face. Um, about a month ago, I think. Um, hence the fact I've got lots of the <laughs> John Harbin, um project bags. I am not sponsored. All this yarn's been bought with my own money. Um, I picked up some of their Knit by Numbers DK in their original base. They are changing their base and that will become relevant in a moment. So I picked up two skeins and I picked them up in number 48 and I don't know what number this one is but it's going to be pretty close because it's the kind of next colour in the range. So in these two kind of greeny bluey colours. Um, I didn't pick up the next colour in the fade and now I really wish I had because they swapped their base so I don't think I'd be able to get hold of this base again and I don't know how different the kind of fibre and the, the finished yarn will look. Um, but this is their DK weight yarn, it's um, 250 metres per 100 grams and I think I'm going to pair it with a third colour which is a tuku wool fingering which I'll hold double. It'll be a bit thick but it'll be fine. So it'll go like this. What do we think guys? Does the green jar a bit or is it okay? Don't know. Um, so that's what I'm thinking of doing. What am I knitting out of it? Well, I've wanted to do a colour work slip over for a really long time. Um, 
but what has put me off is that they are normally bottom-up constructions because lots of them are seamed at the shoulders to get the really nice neck shaping not many of them are raglan if they are raglan then they're maybe not the overall shape that i'd like anyway i bit the bullet and cast on camilla vads um i think i'm pronouncing this correctly get grab up grab up sweat uh, slip over um which is knit from the bottom up now I don't like knitting from the bottom up because, as I mentioned, my row gauge tends to be off My and, I, to be honest, I just don't like swatching. I know the importance of it. I know that by not doing it, I am putting myself at risk of having garments that don't fit right. But at this point in my knitting, there's two things going on. One is that I know that I have enough experience to be able to fudge it as I go along, provided I try things on a lot. And the other thing is that I am still working through a stash that I bought predominantly when I was a student and that meant I bought the minimum amount of yarn that I could because I had a lot smaller budget that I was working with and some of that practice and that mindset has carried over to today so like really I should have bought three or four skeins of this DK weight yarn but again I just don't I don't spend massive money on yarn and I do try and get the most out of the yarn I have. So all that to say, with lots of projects, I don't have two, three, four skeins, I have one or two. And therefore there's not really enough wiggle room for swatching. Um, if I knit the swatch flat, yes, I could unravel it, but actually lots of the things I'm knitting are in the round and to swatch effectively for those, you need to cut, you need to pull your yarn round the back and then cut it at the end so it lies flat. So. Anyway, what I do instead is I measure my gauge once I've got started, and that's what I prefer to do. But with bottom up, even if I do that, <laughs> trying to judge where the armholes are going to sit on me, trying to judge where colour work will finish on me, I hate it. I just hate the whole process. So, why the rant? Well, <laughs> thing is, I actually really love the finish and the, the style of shoulder you can get from a bottom up sweater. And so this time I thought, let's try a provisional cast on because that way i can provisionally cast on below the sleeve split or like even i could cast on separately front and back do the front and back join them and then try it on and then go go from there so yeah i did a provisional cast on just below the sleeve split i then knit up done the shoulder work and stuff and then that means that i can then try it on and then i know that i'm knitting my color work to the correct length i really should show you a picture of the grow up i'm hoping that's how you pronounce it um sweater uh slip over hoping you can see that it's a three color faded color work it's gorgeous um so i did my provisional cast on i knit front and back picked up for the collar did my own collar ribbing and my own um armhole ribbing i didn't follow the pattern for that bit um so I did my classic, which is to do after my rounds of ribbing, excuse me, round of, after my rounds of ribbing, to do a knitted row and then a knit two through the back loop um, cast off. I just think it creates a really polished edge. I then went back in to look at my provisional and because it's the first time I've ever done it, I, I feel like there's a YouTube video showing where you make the whole chain and then you go in and pick up into the loops. I was fine, I was doing it quite late at night and the lighting wasn't good and I was just finding that so fiddly. So I used the crochet hook to literally cast the stitches onto the needle, um, which I think worked, it made it harder to unravel, but fine. But with that many stitches, the problem was it was so easy to get that, that cast on edge twisted, and I did. So when I took out my provisional, not only did it take a while to unravel it all, but also I then needed to unfrog more rows past the past where I'd had the rounds joined in the round, up back to where I was knitting flat. I then added on some extra rows for the armholes to make those a little bit bigger. And getting to the crux of my story, not only do I have what feels like a million and one ends to weave in now, but also I don't have very much of my first colour left at all. And I've only just got started on the colour work and there is quite a number of rows to do with your first yarn and your second yarn. But we've got started. I don't really know if you're going to be able to see. Now my yarn's just falling on the floor, but you can begin to see the colour work forming there. So, picking that up in case a cat decides to join us. So yeah, I am yet again absolutely loving knitting with 
John Arbin Yarn. I have knit uh, Lily Cake Designs, Lily Cake Makes, um, her v-neck sweater, thin air sweater, out of their Yana Delix bought weight base and it just had this beautiful slickness and yet rusticness and it just flowed off the needles and I'm finding the same thing with this. I really do love that balance that they get in their yarn. Um, so really enjoying that. It's just been a bit fiddly. The actual, you know, how I've decided to go about knitting the pattern, nothing to do with the pattern. The pattern's great. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to zipping down the body hopefully today. Uh, the only other modification, sorry, I'm all over the place. This is not a very um, organised or structured way of discussing this project. And um, the final thing that I did that was a modification, aside from starting it in completely the wrong place, was I didn't shape the armhole side, like the sleeve, really. Um, I just ignored the shaping instructions there. I want quite a straight, boxy top to this. Um, just for me personally, my style, my aesthetic, the quite curved armholes can look a little bit childish potentially and also can sit quite funny if you've got uh, a proportionately bigger bust to your shoulders and your waist so that was my decision there anyway hoping to zip through this i kind of had sneakily hoped i'd get this done by this episode i thought i had the collar done i thought i'd have the sleeve on the other card and done i thought i'd have this done even though i only cast this on two days ago two three days ago but yeah, we'll zip down the body of that today in front of some TV. That'll be very enjoyable. Um, so I think that's it really for whips. Those are the main ones I've been working on. I do have, as you guys will know, long term viewers will know, I've got some big sweater projects, uh, two in particular, to be honest, that have been sat as whips for quite a while. Um, one of those is nicknamed my Tresco Doodle Sweater. That is actually sat just up here. That uh, has just been on hold because A, it was so tough on my hands, but B, um, it's been so warm here. Well, not warm, but muggy here that having a big, and that's a really thick sweater sat on your lap is just not, not the one. Also up here in the grey bin is um, one that maybe some of you won't remember, but I'm doing a self-drafted colour work sweater in Wool Dreamer's Manchalope um with then loads of colour work I'm going to sneak the armholes I'm going to sneak the sides I started that back in like February March I haven't touched it since then um because again it's really thick um the other project that I started work on there's some yarn for it up here is the Karen wrap which is one of my designs I haven't released it yet I made a version for my mum for a significant birthday this year I will be releasing it the design um but that again is a lot of knitting on quite a small gauge with quite thick yarn just not what i want to be knitting on at the moment so i figure having the collar project on the go as a potential pattern and then having um my from farm to city shawl which i finally named um in chestnut stage right now is is enough to be getting on with um designs wise i will have those other designs coming out over the autumn winter but let's just stage them. There is no rush. <laughs> um, speaking of, quickly touching on that, we have launched the test knit for the shawl that I showed you all in the last episode. Thank you all for the name suggestions. I really did take inspiration from them. Um, there was lots of kind of quite chic names that kind of, I think someone suggested like a lip, lipstick shawl. There was kind of other people talking uh, about something kind of more ethereal and kind of fantasy, um, like the, the witching hour or something. Um, there's loads of different ideas and I loved them. I think the bit that really stuck with me was that there's kind of a clean, like kind of geometric, quite um, neutral and stylish and simple element to it and then there's the kind of cables in that kind of vibrant mix of colours which um, John Arban have called that colourway pig snout and I just thought actually that's the contrast I want I want something that could equally be worn on a country walk as much as it could be worn in the city you know in the town going for a brunch I wanted both vibes so that's where from farm to city came from so yes, that is in test knit. I have four or five test knitters who are very, very kindly knitting away on that. It's been a real eye opener for me because I've never had to write instructions for cables before and everyone likes them slightly differently, but also it's been a really good challenge for me. They've been very, testers have been very helpful giving feedback and kind of 
clarifying things so it's been a great process um there is still time to join if anybody wanted to um we're kind of keeping things for this one i'm keeping the person it quite individual so i'm liaising with all my test knitters via email separately um in the future it could be really really fun to create a ravelry group for it or a whatsapp group but um i hope people understand at this point i just needed to keep things very like simple <laughs> um but i will learn and evolve how i run these test nets as we go so maybe for the collar um we could run it slightly differently if people have some thoughts so yes that is the test knit. Right, as promised, there's going to be a very, very short section on some yarn I got given as a belated birthday present. That will literally be two minutes, so I'll do that quickly now, but feel free to jump forwards. I will try and put a timestamp here. And then we'll talk about some future knitting and giveaways and very, very brief life update. So we're getting there, guys. Have a sip of your drink, have a quick bite of your snack, and let's launch into some yarny acquisitions. So my sister very, very kindly got me some yarn as a birthday present. And she's got me four balls of knitting for olive merino. She's got me plum rose, mushroom rose, dusty petroleum blue, and bottle green. So she's gonna be one of each with the idea that she said she just wants me to experiment with some colours um, and I can always like substitute with some neutrals to kind of pair with them or I could pair them together. I love it. I love that she's encouraging me to play with colour. Um, the one that I really wanted to discuss with you guys was the bottle green because um, I am looking for a dark green yarn to knit some versions of the Georgia sweater by... I never remember this designer's name. I think she's Joanna, but I, I, anyway, maybe I can find her on Instagram whilst I'm talking to you. I want to knit the Georgia sweater, which has got, it's a lovely raglan sweater and the back is a beautiful deep V with a big bow and it's gorgeous. Um, and I don't, I think the pattern though is knit up in two strands of mohair and that's not going to be possible for me because I need to knit three of these sweaters two for my bridesmaids and um, one for me. So that's going to be a bit challenging. <laughs> so I want to potentially either do it in two strands of lace weight or maybe just like a fingering weight yarn that will bloom. I don't know. Um, but what I also wanted to look into was doing it in some knitting for olive because I really love well, that was great timing. My camera battery just ran out of charge. I thought it'd been charging before I started talking to you, but turns out that plug had been switched off slash unplugged. Anyway, um, it did give me a moment to get the name of the designer of the Georgia sweater. So that sweater is designed by Joanna Gehrischt. Gehrisch? I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's stunning. Um, she actually wore it for her wedding. That is a great picture of the back. Oh, so beautiful. So the reason this links to um, these Yarny gifts is I've been looking at the Knitting for Olive Merino in slate green, which on the Knitting for Olive website is their darkest green. But then, and it's darker than bottle green, which is what I've got in my hand. But when you look at something like Beautiful Knitters website in London, and it's not just them, there are other knitting websites that are the same. Other stockists have got slate green being quite a kind of olivey green and a lot lighter, and bottle green is the darkest green. So it's caused me a bit of confusion. So I would like, I mean, I'm gonna go with that Knitting for Olive have got their own colours right on their website, but it's interesting that so many stockists have got the same difference from Knitting for Olive, if that makes any sense. So if any of you have knit in Knitting for Olive Slate Green, please do let me know what, how dark the colour is and whether it's kind of olivey tinted or whether it's darker than this. Because um, if not, maybe I need to go with Bottle Green. Um, so I'd be very interested to hear on that front. So that is my Yarny acquisitions. In terms of other bits that I thought I'd discuss with you, um, for those who've watched the podcast for a while, you will have seen 
this little thing that I've made. This is knit up in scraps, literally tiny, like 20 grams left of uh, Coop Knit Socks Yeah fingering weight in the colours Chryso and Almadine. Almadine is the orange, Chryso is the blue. I knit one of these from the Knitting Colour Structure and Design book by Alison Ellen. I'm going to knit more of these and then I'm going to do something with them with a sweater, which I'm very excited about. I've never done anything like this. Um, so that's going to be a September project for me, I think, if not August, but only August if I can clear the decks of my other whips that I've shown you today. Um, I don't think I'll force myself to do the two really thick jumpers before this because I think I could get wear out of this before I move into those thick jumpers but yeah this is going to be a project on the cards. I also really really want to make, is it the Glacier Cow? Sorry lots of checking bits on my phone today but I just want to give you the correct information. Um, I think it's called the Glacier Cow, Glacier Park Cow by um, Caitlin Hunter. Uh, let me. I don't know if you can see that. It's gorgeous. I was going to knit that up in two skeins of Wee County Yarns 4-ply that I got at the Wonderwall Festival in Wales. So those are two bits of future knitting. I also still have my Recollect cowl on the needles, so I want to do some more work on that as well over the coming month. So finally, let's turn to giveaways and a very short life update. So, on the giveaway side, many of you will know we're running two giveaways right now. The first is an ongoing alternate episode giveaway. So, I announced the winner, the last winner, last episode. Uh, so, the next winner will be announced next episode. <laughs> episode 19 will be the next winner, will be announced. Um, and this giveaway is running, as I say, alternate episodes. All you have to do is subscribe and comment on the episode in between when has been announced, so this episode. There we go. Comment on this episode, subscribe, and that's all you have to do. And then the prize is your choice of patterns from my Ravelry store, and I will link my Ravelry store below so you can kind of see what those are like. Um, so that's an ongoing giveaway. It's just meant to be a bit of fun, something small, um, just to give back to all of you. The other giveaway we've got running is my 1000 subscriber giveaway. We are currently um, a little way off that, not masses, but a little way off. Um, so in the run up to 1000 subscribers, I wanted to run a giveaway that will be drawn and announced when we hit that 1000 marker. Um, and what, when I originally released the giveaway, and I'll link the video below where I announced it, but what I said was to enter, you need to subscribe and then you need to share this podcast with some of your knitting friends uh, and you can do that via whatever medium you like but I'll just need a screenshot of however you choose to do that or some sort of some form of kind of evidence. Um, now what I realised though is that for some people they may feel really uncomfortable about doing that and so um, I will also extend this to um, well I'm going to have multiple layers to this giveaway anyway so there'll be at least two winners but I'm going to extend the methods of entry. Um, so if you would like to enter but you don't feel comfortable sharing this podcast with somebody, then the other way you can enter is by subscribing both here on YouTube and following me over on Instagram. There will be a separate prize draw for that category. Um, and yeah, <laughs> there, there will be separate prizes for that. Um, for information on what the packages will contain, you should check out my video which I'll link below where I announced this but in summary I don't make the packages up until I've drawn a winner because I want that winner to be able to tell me what their preferences are on so many different levels it might be about yarn type it might be about color it might be about supporting different types of businesses whether it's LGBTQ plus owned diversity owned black owned whatever shopping local whatever matters to you I want to make sure that package supports your ethos um, so, yeah, I don't make the package, but I've given an indication of what kind of things might be in the package, number of skeins, that kind of thing. But as we get closer, I might add additional packages to what I'm offering. I'm offering at least two at the moment, with then another one that I will develop for the Insta and YouTube subscriber entry option. 
So I hope that makes sense. So two very exciting giveaways. I'm really pleased to be running both of them and would like to continue to run giveaways going forwards. So very finally, and I feel like I've been talking four hours, my voice. <laughs> um, very finally, let's talk very briefly about life updates. And that's mainly just to say for those of you that have been following along since February, you'll know that we were, I was talking for ages about the fact we had a potential move coming up. We were trying to get the house ready. We weren't sure whether we were going to move straight from one house to our new house, what we were going to do. And then you've been with me as we've moved into kind of interim accommodation where we're staying with some family. I've started my new job. My other half's been in the southwest still. It's been a real time of term, term, words. What's one? I'm going to go with chaos. There we go. Let's just go with chaos. Um, and it, I've been very grateful to have all of you here and following along and your lovely comments and well wishes as we go through this quite stressful period. We had some great news this week, which was that the building work completed and we put the house on the market, which is so exciting. Now for the really hard part, which is actually getting potential buyers. Um, and we are continuing to look at a property that we really want to purchase, but we can't really move on until we've got something happening on our last one. So that's our big update for this week. Um, but the reason I wasn't able to record last week was that I was down at our old property doing final clean, final bits of DIY just getting it ready for photos and stuff so that's why I wasn't able to do an episode I thought I might be able to sneak one in when I got back but I was so exhausted I just couldn't um and then I popped back to see my family for a bit we've had a bereavement in the family so um I popped back to be with them and then uh I've been working so it's been busy 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 but I've been really really looking forward to touching base with you on here Thank you for your continued support. I will get back onto my weekly podcast episodes set schedule um, as of next weekend. So, yes, thank you for coming along for the ride. Um, I'm hoping that there'll be more exciting news to continue to share. Um, yeah, just really, really looking forward to it. With that, I will wish you a very good rest of the week. And I will speak to you very soon. Stay safe. Happy knitting. Bye for now.